What is a double-breasted jacket? Today we're going to be talking about the double-breasted jacket and all the key elements of a double-breasted jacket. Welcome to Wasco Key. I am your host, Prof, also known as the King of Drape. Let's get into it. Now, let's start with what a double-breasted jacket is. I have on a double-breasted jacket. It's basically a jacket that has a piece of cloth that overlays another piece of cloth. It differs from the single-breasted jacket in the sense that it has an excess layer of cloth overlapping at the quarters like I have on. Now, if you look to my right and also to my left, you'll see a couple of double-breasted jackets, both blazers, and you can see how one of the quarters overlaps the other quarter or the facing overlaps the other facing. And that's what differentiates it from a single-breasted jacket, which essentially has two quarters that connect right in the middle or that button right in the middle. So visually or pictorially, that is a double-breasted jacket. Now, a little bit of history here. Legend has it that the double-breasted jacket actually originated as a military uniform, specifically as a naval uniform. The Royal Navy, if you look at some of their uniforms, even till this day, are essentially the ceremonial uniforms, that is, are double-breasted jackets. Usually, they have four buttons rather than the traditional three buttons or two. They're cut very high and they're worn in a very reg regimental style. And so, like most classic clothes we wear today, a lot of them have been adopted from the military or from regiments. Uh, I could name a few, cavalry twill, twill trousers, uh, all manners of coats, and so on and so forth. But that's a story for another day. Today we're talking about the double rest set coat. So, that is the history. It has its history in the regiment, or specifically in the Navy as far as I understand it. Um, and then it was latterly adopted into civilian wear and into classic, what we now understand to be classic dress. Now, a little bit more of history. Double-breasted coats used to be quite popular back in the 20s and 30s, uh, the golden era, as they would say. And after the war, after the first, Second World War, they sort of went away and um, haven't been as popular uh, as they were in the 30s up until perhaps recently. Uh, for some reason, uh, they are seen as a bit more dandy or superficial uh, than single-breasted jacket. So for most working people, or the working suit has traditionally been a single-breasted coat. Uh, Double-breasted coats are considered more dressy, uh, more ceremonial, if you will. And that is the reason I suspect most men have shied away from the double-breasted coat or suit. However, uh, it's been making a comeback. I've been an avid wearer of the double-breasted for many years. Uh, they, I think they look superbly, superbly elegant, and I quite enjoy them. So that is a little bit of history there. Now, let's talk about casual versus formal. There are a number of ways you could casualize what could be considered a dressy garment like the double-breasted. For instance, the button configuration. Usually, as I mentioned earlier, the naval version of it comes with eight buttons. So four buttons down this line and four buttons down this line. Uh, when it was adapted for civilian wear, it was converted to a six-button garment. Now, if you want to get even more casual than that, you could look at the jacket to my right. It has just two buttons on each row, essentially four buttons. So the less buttons there are, the more casual, essentially, the jacket is. So these are a few ways one could adapt or adopt a double-breasted jacket and make it a bit more casual. The other, of course, is in the choice of fabric and cut. Um, this has been cut as a casual jacket because it is a summer casual blazer. So you look at the button cons configuration, you look at the stitching, for instance, and so on and so forth. So there are a number of ways one could take the double-breasted jacket 
and shall we say, water it down a little bit for casual use. To my left is a slightly more severe uh, or sort of formal uh, double-breasted coat. It's a navy blazer, a very traditional navy blazer, blazer. Again, this has four buttons, but this is strictly by choice. Most who would own a navy blazer would probably go with the six-button version because it just seems more formal. But here I've decided to go with four buttons because I just thought it looked better on this cut. So that is how one might, say, distinguish a casual uh, double-breasted coat versus a more formal double breasted coat. Another idea, another common garment that double breast, the double breasted cost suits is dinner jackets or are dinner jackets. Um, dinner jackets, of course, are evening wear. Uh, typically, they come with peak lapels, even in the single breasted version. But of course, for a double breasted jacket, a double breasted jacket always only, only should be done with peak lapels. Uh, Notch lapel, double-breasted uh, jackets are a travesty. Uh, avoid them at all costs, at all costs, avoid them at all costs. Uh, uh, I've seen a few of those and quite frankly, they look like Frankensteins. Uh, so avoid notch lapel, double-breasted coats. All double-breasted coats must, must, must come with a peak lapel. So getting back to dinner jackets. Uh, dinner jackets are very elegant, evening wear. Uh, quite formal, shall we say. So it sits right well with the nature of the double-breasted coat itself, uh, specifically when made in a dark fabric, um, like a dark navy serge or velvet. Uh, some do them in velvet for dinner jackets, uh, midnight blue velvet, burgundy, uh, bottle green, uh, and so on and so forth, or even black. Uh, so the double-breasted also sits at home or is very much at home uh, as a dinner jacket as well. Now, let's talk about fabrics. What sort of fabrics could one consider when designing or when making should you choose to go bespoke or even buying a double-breasted jacket? Now, because of the flamboyant, shall we say, nature of the cut itself, uh, it is always sensible to keep the fabrics very simple. Again, let me repeat this. Because of the flamboyant nature, or let's say dressy nature of the double breasted jacket, you want to balance it out by keeping the fabrics fairly simple. So here's an example. Whereas one might say go for loud checks with tweed jackets, single breasted tweed jackets, uh, it's usually not a very wise choice for a double-breasted jacket. So double-breasted jackets, even when done in tweed, yes, they are done in tweed, uh, should be kept fairly simple, fairly simple. Maybe some texture or perhaps some texture, a little bit of interest in the fabric, but typically they should, kept, they should be kept solid. The cloth, that is, they should be solid or solid colors, um, nothing too fanciful, nothing too, uh, shall we say, extraneous or um, even eccentric. Uh, it should be simple, the cloth should be simple, and the focus should be on the styling and cut of the jacket itself. Now let's talk about the why. Why should you own a double-breasted jacket? Well, the answer is you don't have to own one, but it is a garment that stands out. It just stands out, and if you're a suit-wearing or a tailored uh, clothing-wearing man, uh, you want to own at least one or two, or if you're like me, several double-breasted jackets. Uh, it just has a presence to it. And depending on how creative you want to get, um, there's so much more leeway uh, for creativity and expression in a double-breasted jacket than you have in a single-breasted jacket. I'll give you an example. The lapels. There's so much leeway to play around with the lapels in a double-breasted jacket. With a single-breasted jacket, you're somewhat limited. The standard lapel size for the average person is about three and a half inches or nine centimeters for a single-breasted jacket. With a double-breasted jacket, you can get a lot more 
shall we say, exuberant. Uh, you can get a bit more eccentric without sort of coming across as over the top. So I've seen lapels that are quite wide, quite wide. Some actually just ridiculously wide, but we're not going there. But this lapel here, which measures about five inches or five and a half, uh, this is about five and a half inches across, uh, is considered quite tame for a double-breasted jacket. This would be considered quite tame or average. I've seen lapels that go all the way uh, past the three-quarter mark, uh, point mark across the chest. Uh, but because of the, again, elegant and, let's say, stylish nature of the garment, uh, you can pull that off if the proportions are well done and if it's well tailored. Um, so, again, why should you own a double-breasted jacket? It is one of those garments that really allow for full expression. They allow you to express yourself. You can express yourself in the lapels. You can express yourself in the button configuration. You can ex express yourself in even the way the buttons are spaced. You can sort of have them wide, have them closer, have them spread apart that way, and, and so on and so forth. Now, which brings me to another point. How should tall men or short men or, let's say, a men with a large girth wear a double-breasted jacket? The rule of thumb is this. And let me use this jacket, for example. If you're, let's say, a full-bodied man with a wide girth, you want to keep the buttons narrowly spaced. In other words, you don't want them spread out too wide apart because what that does is that it essentially accentuates the width of your girth, of your waistline. Again, let me repeat that. The way the buttons are arranged are such that if you're a man with a big waist or sort of a large girth, you want to sort of keep the buttons or the width of the buttons to a minimum. And that essentially removes the focus from the girth of your width. You don't want them spaced out very wide. Whereas, if you're, say, a slender, tall man, you have a lot more latitude there. Um, you can spread the buttons out to give you a bit more latitude, a bit more lateral width. It gives you a bit more presence if you're sort of, again, tall, lanky, slim built. Uh, by spreading the buttons out, it gives you the illusion of width in your meat section. This is a very critical issue. Similarly, with short men, um, you typically, for shorter or diminutive men, I typically recommend the four-button configuration. Because when you go with a six-button configuration, there's just a lot going on. And when you're diminutive, you want to keep things to a bare minimum. You want to be completely minimalist. So you want to stay away from extravagant lapels. You want to sort of stay away from anything that really accentuates or sort of uh, sheds more light on your stature. So you want to style the garment properly, but you want to keep all the styling details fairly simple and to a minimum. So the button arrangements, for instance, if you're, say, diminutive or short and, and sort of heavily built, if you're barrel chested, uh, again, you don't want to spread out the buttons too wide. You want to keep them fairly narrow, very clean in a box. So that is how um, men with different physics or statures can play around with the double-breasted to sort of suit or to flatter their specific um, physique. Now, these are things that are more difficult to do with a single-breasted jacket because single-breasted jackets are fairly utilitarian. They're very simple. Uh, there's only so much you could do. You could go with a one button, two button, three button. You could play around with the height of the gorge and a number of things. But with a double-breasted jacket, I find that there's just so much more room to play around with the proportions and to find the exact configuration between the proportions and the styling of the garment to flatter your specific physique. So that's about it. I touched on a number of things. Uh, I'm trying to keep this very short and not exhaustive. But again, starting from the top, uh, a double-breasted jacket is a coat, essentially, that has one flap, as I have on, 
over the other one. One flap over the other one, buttoned inside. I'll unbutton this for a second. So here you have it. There's a button on the inside that anchors one of the quarters. You button that first. And then you button this, the middle, the waist button. Typically, the lower button stays unbuttoned in the same manner that the lower button of your single-breasted coat, if you have a two-button single-breasted coat, stays unbuttoned. So the lower button stays unbuttoned. You button this, and of course, the top one uh, doesn't get buttoned because they don't even touch. So this is a double-breasted jacket, what I have on. We talked about the different styles, how to style it, and how to manipulate the different elements of the jacket to flatter your specific uh, physique. We talked about the history of the double breasted jacket, its history in the regiment or in the Navy, the Royal Navy or Her Majesty's Na Navy if you prefer uh, to be specific and how that style or sort of that was transferred to civilian dress and then converted to what is ultimately or what we know today as classic dress. Uh, we also talked about formal versus casual uh, how to distinguish between a formal double-breasted jacket and a casual single-breasted jacket and how to play with the different elements of the jacket to casualize it or make it more formal. Uh, we also talked about the dinner jacket and why and how uh, the double-breasted jacket is particularly suited to a dinner jacket just because of the elegance and the, uh, let's say, panache. Uh, that comes with the cut of the, the cut and style of the garment itself. Uh, we also talked about fabric selection, what to look out for when you're buying or making a double-breasted jacket. Again, keep the fabrics very simple, very plain. It's a very exuberant cut. And so you want to focus on the styling and the cut of the garment and keep the fabric to a minimum or sort of keep it quiet, keep it in the background. Uh, and finally, we talked about why. Why every man should own at least one double-breasted jacket or suit in their wardrobe. And if you're like me, several. So that's about it. Thank you for this segment. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we look forward to bringing you the next segment still on double-breasted jackets. We're going to talk about other things uh, that one might want to consider when diving or delving into this realm of the double-breasted jacket. Thank you once more. I am your host, Prof, also known as the King of Drape, and I'll see you on the next episode of Ask Oki. Goodbye.